All right, hello everybody and welcome. Welcome to Mods Pods virtual open house. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. At Mods, we've really been striving to adapt to our changing situation throughout um, the last several months. We've taken to offering a good number of virtual programs and we now are opening our doors to students uh, throughout the school year in order to um, help out working families here in Broward County with our Mods Pods program. So tonight we're going to go through the Mods Pods program. You'll get introduced to our team. We have some videos to give you a little bit of perspective into what our classrooms look like and what, what the, uh, the school days will look like and really how it all kind of folds out with, with uh, Mods helping to facilitate uh, student learning um, as initiated by their teachers. So as we get started, I'm David Webb. I'm the Director of Education at MODS, and I have with me an uh, entire team of our education uh, crew here. And also we have Hillary Wallace. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Uh, also, we have Hillary Wallace, who is our Director of Events, and she will help to facilitate this uh, session and can mute and unmute as needed uh, and also she'll help channel questions through um, the chat so if possible if you have any questions that arise as you're watching this presentation please put them into the chat and we'll get to them at the very end um, we will cover a lot of things in here so sometimes if you ask a question we may actually end up covering it and so when we do get to those we can just skip through them. all right everybody let's go ahead and begin uh, I'd like to go ahead and introduce you to the rest of our team. Uh, we have Brenda Bodiger. Hi, Brenda. If you wave for everybody. Hey there. So Brenda is our Mods Pods manager. And then we have pod leads. And these pod leads are essentially um, our staff that will help to facilitate student learning in the classrooms. We have Carolyn. Hello, Carolyn. I see you on there. We have Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Lexi's on here, Liz, Alina, and Shanita. So each of our pods has their own unique name that corresponds to the amazing ambassador animals that we have at, at MODS. And uh, these names uh, will associate directly with those rooms that children will stay in. Okay, so I'm not gonna read through these as much as talk through uh, what it is that we're just trying to convey here in this open house. We will record this session and we are recording this session and we'll post it so that you're welcome to go back and review it again. Also, any of these links that are on here, uh, they're on our website, so you'll be able to access those. And if you have any questions, even after this presentation is over, please feel free to contact us. And we do have information at the very end. Also, all of you joining us, uh, we have a code that you will be able to use for your first time registration that will also be at the end of this. All right, so we created Mods Pods as a way to help facilitate the learning needs of Broward County students. And what they're doing is, as you know, as parents, you know, they're participating in e-learning, distance learning with their own classrooms. So the way we have to facilitate that at Mods to enable that to happen in a safe environment is going to be explained in this presentation. All of our um, Mod Pods leads are uh, going to be completely background checked. Most of them already are. That includes uh, FBI fingerprinting background checks. So uh, we are 100% uh, safe environment for, for your child. And we also are abiding by uh, CDC guidelines. So we have on the Mods website at this link, Healthy Sciences, Healthy Choices. And we go through our entire welcome back plan on the website. Uh, we have that posted for you to see how MODS is, is uh, meeting uh, the safety uh, needs of, of your child. Also, uh, students will be able to complete their school day on their device in small pods. So these pods, the, the term pods that we use is, is, is referring to the classroom space we have six separate isolated four walled classroom spaces that are completely shut off from other groups. And your child will be working in that group with one of these pod leads. And those pod leads are really just helping to facilitate 
they're learning through their device with their teacher. So uh, we've had some of you contact us already with questions and it, it, some of those questions have been, okay, how much are they gonna be learning in those pods? That is 100% coming from Broward County Public Schools or whatever school your child is enrolled in and how they're able to engage in their school day. And we're here to help facilitate that. So we're here to help make sure that um, they are social distanced and safe, but also able to connect on their devices. Each of these pods will have boosted Wi-Fi, so your child will be able to connect. Uh, we have cables for them to plug into, and I'll get a little bit uh, more into how that will unfold in, in a couple of slides ahead. So we're there to support their, their school day. We're there to help uh, make sure that they're meeting the needs of the classes that are taught by their teachers. Outside of the learning day, students will enjoy recess and enrichment. So they do have recess uh, incorporated into their day. That's part of the Broward County Public School schedule. And then at the end of the day, we offer our Mods Pods enrichments, which have all kinds of really fun stuff that we'll talk about uh, a, a little bit further along. Um, and we also ask that parents make this commitment. We call it the Mods Pods Parent Commitment. And that helps to enable us with our sponsors. We do have some financial aid um, packages available um, for qualifying students. And we also want to make sure that this program is sustainable for us and that, you know, the staff that we bring on, um, we're able to maintain this through the duration of the time that Broward County Public Schools is not offering in-person education. So we're doing this to help working families uh, go, you know, have have the livelihood, be able to go to work, um, be able to, my dog is a little excited. So be able to go to work and be able to um, operate up to pay and uh, have their child in a safe place where their learning can be facilitated. Um, the uh, schedule is based upon Broward County Public School schedule. And you'll see down here that it's, it's subject to change based on their, their own um, protocols, their own schedule. And also, just so you know, uh, these pods will be broken up by um, uh, separate groups, but those groups will have mixed ages. So we do that for a couple of reasons. One reason is uh, we wanna have students grouped by families to the extent that's possible. So if we have um, siblings that maybe get dropped off and picked up at the same time, um, that is uh, something that it helps to enable a, a good safe transition. Also, you know, if we're really keeping our pods confined and we're thinking of these, you know, I don't want to sound cold, but we're thinking of them as kind of like quarantine spaces for your child, um, having them in the same group, the same household members, the same family members in the same group helps to keep them confined. So, you know, in the event um, uh, somebody does have to go home, you know, due to illness, uh, that could uh, affect other members of the pod. And if they're in the same family, then that helps to lessen the impacts on other pods. So you don't have that sort of like cross contact. Um, also, some of the younger students will need help with their school day. And, and by needing that help, um, uh, we don't wanna have all of them in one particular classroom. So um, we'll have to have, uh, uh, the leads be able to help facilitate their day. Um, excuse me, my dog is climbing under me. Hold on one second. <laughs> um, help help them through their day. We like, want to have a little bit of extra entertainment, I guess. Um, the, daily, the daily schedule. This is, this is one of the things that come along with uh, doing these virtual sessions. So um, I, I uh, unfortunately had to do it at home and I didn't have anywhere to, to put my dogs up right now. Um, the daily schedule will adapt to accommodate the Broward County uh, public school schedule. So their schedule could end up changing a little bit based upon uh, how they wanna shape their school day. And as that changes, we will adapt as we can. Also, it's important to note that different children in the same pod may end up having um, different schedules, but for the most part, their schedule will fit 
and they'll be wearing headphones and in their own individual um, lessons with their teachers. And they won't end up having to be um, interrupting or uh, disrupting the other kids like my. Um, a couple of sort of uh, requirements for the program in order for your child to be successful is to remember to help them come prepared every single day to the sessions. Um, the other thing to mention uh, that I, I didn't mention before with the pods is that we will actually continue this through school days off. So the only days we're looking right now at Mods Pods not being open for your child is Thanksgiving Day, the day after Thanksgiving, and Christmas Day. So otherwise, all of those school holidays, we will operate Mods Pods. Uh, we will not have separate um, Mods camps going on those days. It'll just be Mods Pods so we're able to keep your child safe and in their same pod, their same isolated pod group. Um, we will supply t-shirts. Uh, we'll give two t-shirts to every child and an additional is available for $5 if you wanna get more shirts for your child. Uh, reusable water bottles will be supplied by Mods. We will also have sanitizer on hand, along with frequent hand washing throughout the day I'll talk about later. Uh, individual cubbies, your child will have their own cubby space that uh, is labeled with their name, that, that is uh, only theirs to use. Uh, they will have their own desk space uh, that, is, that is separated and we'll, we'll have a little video that shows how that will look. Um, financial aid is available to uh, qualifying students and um, financial aid students will have lunch and snacks provided by Broward County Schools and that is um, currently our model and that is based on how they determine who gets free and reduced lunch. Um, additional snack is available if you would like uh, to bring an additional snack as well, you can. Uh, parents are responsible for sending their child with two masks for daily use and hand sanitizer. So make sure your, your child has their own hand, hand sanitizer. They can keep it in their bag or at their desk. Um, and then if they need an extra mask or they lose one, it's always good to have an extra one. There. All supplies and materials that, that are required by the teacher should be brought by your child. And they can leave that behind because they're gonna have their own cubby and they're gonna have their own desk space. There's no need to bring all of your supplies back and forth each day. So ideally, we really encourage you to have your child leave those supplies with us if possible. Um, we also have the homework time within Mods Pod, so uh, they shouldn't have to bring home everything every single day. Um, have them bring their laptop, their device, uh, their chargers, and their headphones. Uh, very important that children have their headphones so that their lessons are self-contained with their teachers. Each child could be in a completely different class, completely different school, uh, different grade levels. And the idea is that they have their instructional time with their teachers and they're completely self-contained with their headphones on. Um, for fee-based uh, children, parents should send lunch with their child and if desired, an additional snack. All right, so um, bear with me for one second as I pull up our little presentation on, this is our webpage, by the way, I mentioned earlier about healthy choices. So on here we have all of that additional information for um, how to come prepared and safe and keep your child and other children safe at Mod Pod. So let me go ahead and share this. Can everybody hear the sound? No sound? All right, let me redo the no, share. No sound, David. All right. How are we now with sound? Good.
All right, thank you. Um, and thanks to our team and our interns, we actually had a, a high school student help put that video together for us, and that was uh, really well done. Let me go ahead and uh, bring the presentation back up for you. Whoops. Okay, so with our... With, with the video you just saw, you were able to see a little bit of what our classroom uh, setup looks like, the students at their tables uh, socially distanced, um, masks on at all times. We'll get into some of those protocols. And also we really, really, really remind students all day to wash their hands regularly. We, we make them wash their hands regularly. Um, also when they are having free time, free play time, um, we remind them to stay socially distanced even when they're outdoors. So. Uh, you'll see kids running around in some of those videos, but they're still uh, kept uh, socially distanced in, in even those activities. Um, temperature checks and the health questionnaire is taken daily. So upon arrival and check-in, and Brenda will talk a little bit more about this, every single staff member, every single child, everybody who walks in the doors at MODS, even if we have a contractor or a vendor coming in, they have to undergo a temperature check and they have to undergo a health questionnaire in which they um, have to answer no to any question that could uh, lead us to worry about, about um, COVID with them. Um, masks are required by all students and staff at all times. Socially distanced mask breaks are taken throughout the day outdoors in the science park. And with that, children, um, you know, we do have some children that uh, especially if they're smaller, they don't want to keep their masks on, they're going to have to keep their masks on indoors at all times. It's not at all acceptable to have a mask off indoors. So um, if they need a break, they can step outside um, under supervision and they can remove their mask for a short time. Um, also lunch is eaten outside. We don't want kids taking their masks off, uh, even eating lunch indoors or anywhere that they are um, possibly being exposed to contamination or contaminating others. Um, and we will take them to wash their hands regularly throughout the day. We have um, our, our pod rooms for the most part have a sink with soap and they are constantly taking breaks, washing their hands every hour. And also when they go to the restroom, they are reminded to wash their hands. Um, this is, essentially the CDC, updated CDC guidelines. And if your child is experiencing any symptoms, if they're, if they're experiencing um, uh, illness, if they've been exposed to someone, or if they have been around somebody who has tested positive for COVID-19, they're not allowed to come to MOD. So please keep them at home. Uh, Broward County Public Schools is planning for kids to have absences. They're planning for that regular um, absence uh, uh, the number of absences that children can have, uh, tardiness as well. So, you know, if, if there's ever a question, please don't uh, allow your child to come um, and, and expose other children. That could, that could end up uh, leading us to have to shut down um, particular pods. If your child is brought in and, and has a known exposure, um, the entire pod will have to stay home. So we do have more information about that on the web page that I shared with you earlier but we take every possible protocol to keep your child safe and also our staff. Um, and that includes, you know, coming back in order to come back, anybody, including staff, um, who have the above mentioned um, possible exposure or exposure, have to stay home for 14 days. They have to have no fever um, for 24 hours without taking medication to reduce the fever and um, any sort of symptoms. And uh, most people uh, uh, um, do not require testing to decide when they can be around others. However, your healthcare provider, if they, if they recommend testing, um, they'll notify you when to resume. So uh, all of that information, again, the, the details of it are, are broken down in our welcome back plan that MODS uh, has literally spent months putting together. And we adjust as the CDC makes adjustments as well. So we stay up to date with CDC guidelines. All right, so I will 
stop sharing again and I'm going to uh, show another video to everybody about our cleaning protocols. And this one's even more fun because we have Joey the Otter. <laughs> today to show you all of the great ways that we're keeping the museum clean to keep your family safe and every day at the museum we connect you to inspiring science this is joey the otter and joey's going to take you on a tour of the museum and show you what our cleaning crew has been doing to prepare you for your visit first thing let's put on our mask the museum of discovery and science is a trustworthy place to visit explore and enjoy Learn how we regularly maintain cleanliness and the extra measures that we're putting into place to make sure that this is a safe place for you and your family. At MODS, the health and safety of our visitors, staff, volunteers, and animals is a top priority year round. We ensure the cleanliness of our space and our employees are trained on MODS established protocols that help keep the museum a safe, clean, and fun place to learn. For a better understanding, we're sharing these steps and extra measures we're taking to continuously protect the health of our guests. As you make your way through the museum, feel free to use the sanitized interactives that have been placed out around the floor. All of these items have been cleaned, and then after you're done using them, they'll be cleaned for our next guest. We use a cleaning solution that is compatible for both cloth and wipe and electrostatic sprayer applications. This solution is labeled as disinfectant, sanitizer, and viricide. It's food safe and approved for school use. We have a dedicated team that spends their day working in the museum, cleaning all of our areas, including trash removal, the science park, our atrium, the balcony, elevators, escalators, exhibit areas, and stairwells. Additionally, Staff specifically for COVID-related cleaning will clean and disinfect using cloth and wipe and electrostatic sprayer methods of cleaning throughout the museum, including all restrooms, on an hourly basis or more as needed. Cleaning staff make their rounds throughout the museum, disinfecting every area that the public may encounter. This includes cleaning our IMAX theater, disinfecting it after every screening throughout the day. This covert cleaning team is always there to sanitize high-touch, interactive areas after patrons have passed through the museum. We can't wait to see you and your family back at MODS. In the meantime, visit mods.org slash healthy scientists and come see us here. Thanks and have a scientastic day. All right, scientastic. That's my new favorite word, everybody. <laughs> All right, let me uh, bring the presentation back up for you. All right. Okay. Thank you for bearing with me through the transition. Um, and also be sure to check out our YouTube channel. We have a lot of additional videos on there from Virtual Camp Discovery, covering every topic you can imagine right now at MODS. Uh, we've been very busy producing virtual content and there's a lot of really fun, entertaining stuff for you and, and your uh, child at Virtual Camp Discovery. So check out our YouTube channel. That's where that last video was uh, streamed from. Um, homework time. So now if we get a little bit into the aftercare uh, enrichments, uh, we do have that guided homework time um, where we are there to sort of uh, support your child as they are working through their homework. So again, this is all directed by their teachers, but we do have staff there. If your child has a question, we can uh, work with them to try to help them out with their homework. But in no way, you know, right now with uh, the staff that we have on, are we going to be uh, teaching them through their homework or tutoring specifically, but we will be there to support their homework to make sure that they're going through their questions. Uh, a lot of the time you, you kind of have to help facilitate children with their homework to just make sure they stay on task. Um, and then, you know, every now and then they'll run into uh, something that they have a question about and we can then help them directly or resource that out to get some answers for their questions. Um, students are welcome to bring an extra book of their choice every day. So we wanna, we wanna have children um, busy learning all day long uh, and most schools encourage them to bring a book to school. I know as a former teacher that whenever a child was uh, in between their lessons, 
it's an expectation in schools that your child has a book that they can read uh, during those breaks so they're not disrupting other students. That's throughout the school day. And then here at MODS in our aftercare enrichments, we want children to have a book with them as well so that when, when they're doing their homework time, if they're finished with their homework, they can uh, pull out their book and improve their reading skills, become better readers. Uh, reading is absolutely integral to every subject area that they have. Um, after school enrichments, uh, once we finish that homework time, we have science shows, we have animal encounters with our, our zookeepers, so they get to meet a zookeeper. Uh, we have documentaries and, and um, IMAX documentary films, uh, exhibit explorations, and games that we will have with the children, all, again, socially distanced and following those guidelines. We also have a science park and, and some other fun things for, for kids to explore. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to Brenda. Our uh, Brenda has uh, been our STEM camp manager for years, and now she's taking over as the Mods Pods manager specifically. Uh, she is our expert in house on all things having to do with your child's uh, learning experience at Mods, informal science education, um, and now facilitating this uh, Mods Pods program. Uh, sign in and sign out will be very similar to uh, how, if you've had your children in our camps, how that is operated. So Brenda, please go ahead and share a little more. Hi everyone. Uh, I noticed that we do have a few camp families joining us tonight, so it's nice to see everyone. Um, sign in and sign out um, will be similar to our camp discovery sign in every day, if you're familiar with that. We do use uh, the Bright Wheel app um, you can choose to download that app if you would like. You don't have to, um, but once you register for Mods Pods, you will be receiving an invitation email from Brightwheel. So um, that'll probably happen the Monday or Tuesday uh, prior to um, Mods Pods starting. Um, that'll, that'll give you a four digit code that will be um, specific to your camper. Um, through the app, you'll be able to change that code to something you'll remember easily. Um, and there are other things that you can do through the app as well. Um, you, you can text us through the app um, to let us know things like if you're going to, if you're running a little bit late or if you need to pick up early or something like that. Um, in fact, I had a, a camp parent text me through the app tonight wondering what the Zoom information was for, for, uh, our open house, but um, the Bright Wheel app has worked really well for us. Uh, pick up, or I'm sorry, check in will be from 7:30 to 8 each morning. Like I said, in the bus loop, um, I will be checking you in um, using my code, so that way um, our sign in process and sign out process is touchless. Um, during sign out every day, you do need to make sure you have that code with you. Um, we do not release our kids um, without that code. So um, if mom is dropping off, make sure, and dad is picking up that day, make sure dad has that code. Um, we also require that anyone picking up your child um, is on our emergency contact forms that you fill out online. Um, so just be sure that anyone picking up your child at the end of the day um, has that code and they're on our emergency contact information. Um, a little bit different than Camp Discovery, we will be doing um, checkout at the end of the day in the bus loop as well. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. Um, like I said, 7.30 to 8 in the morning, and then um, we're going to start, you'll be, avail you'll be able to pick up um, your child anytime between 4.30 and 6. Um, that's when we start our free time and we'll have somebody available for checkout. Um, I, think, I think that's the extent of it. Um, if you have any questions um, throughout the week, please feel free to contact me. Perfect, thank you, Brenda. Um, and that's, that's actually uh, absolutely, you're getting it from the expert on sign in, sign out. And then again, if you have any, any questions, um, please make sure to uh, contact Linda. And um, we have information at the end of the slide um, at the end of this presentation, which is right here. Uh, 
a little bit of additional information as we close up right before we get to questions. I want to make sure that uh, we mention the code, which is here, visible for you. This is that one-time code that you can use uh, to get a, a discount, $15 off of your first um, transaction uh, payment with um, Mods Pods. And multi-trial discounts. Um, again, you're able to save $15 per child per week if you have um, more than one child in our program. Uh, we love having siblings in and we'll put them in the same pods. And financial aid is available. We do have a family foundation that is um, going to help support this right now. So um, uh, we're very grateful to them for their support for this program and also making things uh, like this possible for your family. Um, if you need to inquire, you can contact booking at mods.net. And if you don't have Brenda's direct email address, you can also use this email uh, um, to have a question forwarded to Brenda. Uh, but that's if it comes up later because we have Q&A time right now. So um, Hillary, do we have any questions? Let's see if I can. Yes, I'm sending them to you as we speak. Great. All right, so. They're coming in the chat. Great, thank you, Hillary. Uh, so I see um, for the KG kids, how can we ensure that they are completing their assignments at the parent university meeting yesterday? It seemed like there will be a lot of downtime. Um, so with, with children completing their assignments, um, that is something that, um, we will, so our, our pod leads will be in the room to help facilitate their learning. It's really up to teachers to make sure that those, those lessons are being turned in, that they communicate with parents. If you have any specific needs for your child, if your child is not getting assignments turned in, um, we can help them focus on specific assignments during their homework time. Um, but during that school day, it's 100% uh, learning that is facilitated by the teacher. Uh, we will be making sure that they're on task, that they're following along with their lessons, that they have their headphones on and they're watching uh, and engaging with their teacher as they're instructed. Um, but uh, hopefully that answers your question. If they're falling behind in any of their work or they're not keeping up, you can always talk to us to help facilitate that. Um, but again, it is, it, it, it is very similar. We're kind of like a middle person uh, between you and your, your child and your and your teacher during the process that you would normally just have a, a parent-teacher relationship with the child. We're there to help facilitate the learning of your child um, via the teacher, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. Great, thank you. Um, trying to find, looks like Hillary. There's a lot of chat in here, so it's hard to decipher what's what. I'm just gonna go to the very top. Um, so I see some other Virginia Schumann young parents on here. Is it possible to have my son? Yes, absolutely. So, um, in addition to putting children together based on their, um, family relationships or household relationships, we will also put children in their pods as much as possible with their individual schools. So, um, and, and teachers by all means, but one factor that comes in is this program is first come first serve so i do want to make sure to encourage you to register as soon as possible we only have uh, uh, less than 60 spaces available for this program and um, we expect them to fill up very quickly by the amount of interest we've had in the program and we also have um, scholarship spots available that we expect to fill up so number one first come first serve is to make sure your child gets into the program number two is we're, we will fill up pods incrementally. So once we put a child in a pod, if they register, we don't wanna move them to another pod for those safety reasons I mentioned earlier. Um, we will make sure that we fill like one pod at a time um, based upon need. And then from that point, unless the children um, register at the same time and we can say that they will go with corresponding um, uh, schoolmates from their same school, they will be placed into pods that are on a first come first serve basis, if that makes sense. Um, 
let's see, working, and I apologize for reading informally like this as I go through, but um, I see comments, lots of comments, good, lots of good comments. I'm glad you guys are happy with what we're offering. Thank you so much uh, for the good feedback. Um, all right, lots of nice feedback. I like seeing that, thank you. Um, I can't imagine there will be much homework after having a child sit in front of the screen for six hours. Uh, <laughs> I actually, I, I understand 100% what you're saying. Um, if teachers are doing their job, they're going to want to assign a little bit of homework to go along with it. Um, that's just part of the academic rigor they're required to do. You know, teachers still have to meet all of those objectives of standardized testing and teaching. They have to teach according to um, scale and scope and sequence that is uh, dictated by the district. So within the Florida Department of Education, they actually have to follow specific um, guidelines and, standard, and standards that they have to follow and teach to. And then Broward County takes all of those standards that they have to teach to and then splits them into what they call scope and um, sequence. So then they go through all of those individual standards that a child has to learn throughout the school year and break them out into week by week lessons. Uh, your child is expected to not only learn them, but really master a lot of these skills. And that's up to the teacher, their own teacher, to assess through regular, you know, assessments at the end of, of, a, of a subject area lesson or a chapter. And uh, if your child falls behind, it's up to the teacher to make sure that they work with your child to help them keep up with the other students in, in understanding the concept of reading and writing. Um, the, the thing with that is children have to um, have that homework to help reinforce the level of rigor they need to meet all of those standards and, and to show mastery of those standards. So I expect teachers will um, still be assigning homework and, uh, and I'll have time at mod class to complete that. Um, it's dinner time for my dog, so she's blaming me. <laughs> um, I can't imagine, let's see. Uh, how can we ensure they're completing their assignments? Um, as I was saying a little bit before, um, we, wanna, we wanna make sure that they're engaged and working throughout the day. That's what our pod leads are doing. Our pod leads are not teaching them during the day. Their teachers are. Um, our pod leads are there to facilitate them. Um, Sun School will not be giving any homework. Absolutely, oh my gosh, yeah. So um, in addition to that book, if your child brings their own device, that's fantastic. If they bring their own games, that's fantastic. When they're done with their schoolwork, while other students are doing their schoolwork, we don't want them to be disruptive to them. We don't want them to feel, you know, urged to take their mask off or um, run around during that time um, indoors. So please send them with a device, send them with games, send them with um, a device that maybe can stream videos for them to interact with or watch. Uh, we want to make sure that your child throughout their day, this is a very unique situation for us. And, you know, speaking from the heart here as an educator, we want to see kids running around. We want to see kids having fun. We want to see kids interacting with our exhibits and doing programs that we spend so much time on um, that are so important to us. And it is tough seeing kids confined in pods and zones. Even, even in the aftercare setting, we're having them uh, separated into zones and they're not going to be able to interact with kids from the other pods. Uh, I find that incredibly unfortunate, but it's what we have to do in this situation. And part of that, part of that adapting to this situation is making sure that your child has everything that they need to kind of keep them, keep them busy and occupied um, during those times, because we, uh, we won't be able to facilitate a lot of interactive um, uh, learning with them while other kids are doing their homework. We can, however, and that also comes into social distancing. So you have to teach your child from a distance. Uh, we can't come and like, you know, our, our leads can't really like lean over your child and help them specifically that way. They have to maintain social distance for their safety and your child's safety. Um, and there is the portion, if you refer back to our schedule for the day, where we have more guided activities in the uh, aftercare section and those guided activities are things that are hands-on will give your children things to create to build the stuff we love doing at mods making um, different little lab experiments they'll be making slime they'll be doing lots of fun stuff in aftercare but it is good to make sure that they have uh, materials to entertain them uh, during downtime same at school they, they need to help them with their, um, materials at school. Uh, 
Um, let's see, scholarship. I'm not aware of a first responder healthcare worker scholarship. I absolutely think that's incredibly important. Um, not aware of that at this point, but please go ahead and contact the, the booking email that the email address that was in the last slide. I'll put that back up at the very end if you need to refer to it again. And we can look into if there is anything additional available. Um, regarding homework, just reading this quickly. Yeah, so during aftercare, they will remain in those pods. Um, they won't necessarily be in the rooms, but they will be in zones. And we will have areas on the floor marked off. At this time, we're looking at maybe using stanchions or even just tape on the floor that are confined areas for those zones for your child. And those are only in open space areas or outdoors. Um, we will not have pods near each other. Um, their, their learning environment is, a, is an enclosed four-walled room. Um, but when they're out in aftercare or recess, we have a wide expanse of a museum floor that has a much higher occupancy and we can spread them out in these zones as well as out in Science Park. And that's all, um, the idea is that we would have rotations and be able to have certain groups out in certain areas at certain times. And that is 100% for the safety of your child um, to make sure that, that um, they get exposed to all this really cool stuff we have at MODS, but we can't have everybody out there at once if that makes sense. Um, David, um, I can interject here and assist uh, quickly with the first responders question. Um, the Early Learning Coalition, uh, based on a call that we were on today, Renee Jaffe was uh, speaking and addressing the group on that same topic. And she stated that there was funds available uh, for first responders. Uh, however, there were applications that were due by July the 31st. Um, I don't know if there might be another wave of uh, you know, funding available and then they will reopen that application process, but I would recommend calling uh, Renee Jaffe over at the Early Learning Coalition to learn more about that because she seemed to have the specifics. Thank you, Meredith, that's, that's perfect, thank you. Um, uh, so at this point, it looks like I've gotten through all the questions on here. I would like to ask my expert team if I left anything out going through this. This was a lot of information. It's quite possible I left something important out. Um, Brenda, Liz, Meredith, anyone else? Okay, well, let me bring that slide back up. Thank you so much. Um, let me bring that slide, that final slide back up and then I'll wrap this up. Great, so you should be able to see um, forward this final slide. Um, and I wanna make sure that I kind of send you off with this final slide in case you need to refer to it. Again, if you have any questions, you can contact booking at mods.net if they come up after this. Thank you so much. We hope that you entrust um, your, your child to be part of this program, the Mods Pods program. And we hope that you're able to make that commitment to see the rest of this uh, crazy time out with us um, until the school district brings their in-session classes back. Um, again, thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful night. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.